our 2023 McKinney ISD Secondary Teacher of the Year from Scott Johnson Middle School, Don Griffin. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. Um, I'm like a lot of people. I, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the man upstairs giving me exactly what I do every day to, to give, out, give out to other people. Um, I have an amazing family. I have an amazing support group over here. Um, I will say that I'm honored to be in the category with two of my own children's teachers. So shout out to Mr. Moore over here who teaches my crazy son, Jace, and, and also uh, Ms. Watson over here for forensics who teaches my senior who's about to graduate from McKinney High School. So it's a privilege and an honor to be up here with other teachers who teach your own children. Okay, that just, I can just leave it at that and, and step off the stage. But I will say this, that um, Miss Felice right here, she actually interviewed me 10 years ago. And so I will never, ever, ever forget this. She interviewed me for Cockrell. I was actually a sub. I had come from another district. Took about a year off. And so to, to be with my own children and my nephews came to live with me, so I took a year off to kind of raise them for a little bit. And so I was in her building, and there was a special ed position open. I used to be a sped teacher. And I rem it was a, a, a group full of people interviewing me, and so she thanked me for coming. And, and you can kind of, I'm a speech communications teacher, so I teach interview skills. So you can kind of tell when an interview goes well and when it doesn't. So you can read people's, that's how I teach kids, read people's body language. So I was reading her body language and everyone else in there, so I kind of felt like the interview went well. So uh, long story short, I ended up not getting the job. <laughs> However, she personally called me and said, Donna, I absolutely loved your interview. I tried my best to work things around to put you in my building. And I don't even know if she remembers this. And so she said, um, however, there is a position at Johnson Middle School. Go get your job. 30 minutes later, the principal then calls me, and I go up there, and I, didn't, I had no idea what to do with my children, so I called somebody, and I was like, okay, I need for you to watch my kids. Obviously, they were much younger. And so I went up there, and I was able to get hired on, and um, I thank her for that because she saw something in me. And although one thing I, I truly admire about McKinney is the fact that if they can't fit you in their building and they see something in you that maybe no one else sees, they will literally find a place for you. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. I don't know if she remembers that moment. Uh, but I want, one thing that I really want to leave this entire audience with, when you can make a difference, make a difference. So one thing that I have realized in life, my very first career was actually being a hairstylist. And so people would often tell me their problems. <laughs> And people would often tell me also um, just, you know, what their life was about. And so you give words of encouragement. If you've ever been to a beauty salon, you know this, right? And so um, one thing people used to always tell me is, Don, you should be a motivational speaker. No, I'm good. You should be a motivational speaker. No, I'm good. Then my husband's cousin saw something in me. He said, maybe you should be a teacher. And I said, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I used to tell my clients, I don't know how y'all do it. I said, it's going to have to be God himself that tells me to actually be a teacher. Well, that's what he did. So I've recognized that my gift is actually the gift of motivation and encouragement. And so years ago, my, my kid actually, my kids went to Reuben Johnson. And so every day my son would have to come home and he would call me and say, Mom, I'm home. So he called me and he said, uh, Mom, I'm home, but there's a bird that flew in the door. Oh, okay. Well, we're just going to wait for it to die. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you, right? So um, one thing, my husband's gift is actually caregiving. Anytime that we've been on, uh, our kids are heavily involved in sports, and so he's, he's coached uh, my son's football and basketball teams, and anytime a kid would actually get hurt, Next thing I know, he would automatically be on the field. If a kid gets hurt anywhere, oh, wait a minute, I have a Band-Aid in my car. He's always there. Your gift is something that you are naturally tied to. Your gift is something that someone else needs from you. The apple tree does not eat its own apple fruit. The, the pear tree does not eat its own pear, pear, pears, but simply because it's designed to bless someone else. Okay? It's designed to give back to other people. And so this particular day, my son calls me and tells me this. So, of course, I'm coming home about 5.30. 
my son has football practice. I come around the front because we have an alley, and I come around the front, and my husband has, he's outside, and he has this box. And so I come around, and I'm nagging. Babe, you're going to be late. You're going to would you please hurry up? You're going to be late. So he's trying to create this box of this very comfortable home for this bird. <laughs> he has food. He has shelter. He has all kinds of things for this bird. And so what ends up happening, the bird goes in the backyard. And luckily, my dog, my boxer buster, did not eat the bird. But every day, Jace is kind of, my son's right here, he's kind of checking on the bird. I don't even know if he remembers this. So this was on Monday. On Friday, I have completely forgotten about the bird, y'all. Completely forgotten about it. Jay says, um, Mom, it's almost time to go to school, but I think we need to let the bird go. Okay. I said, well, you need to go outside and get the box. So you hear the, the bird just kind of flapping around in the box. So I said, well, Jace, the only way we're going to know if it's healed, basically, is we have to open up the box because the bird is designed to fly. It's not designed to stay in the box. So we go out front, and it's almost 8 o'clock, and I'm trying to get into Reuben Johnson. Um, thank you, great teachers, for probably letting him in late that day. But uh, he, he's outside, and so he opens up the box. And the bird, I will never forget this, and I promise you I wish I would have recorded it. I looked at the bird, and the bird is just kind of laying there. So my gift is the gift of motivation and encouragement. My husband's gift is the gift of caregiving. He's already cared for the bird. Now it was my turn to walk in my gift. And I said, okay, okay, bird, come on, bird, come on, bird, let's fly, bird, you've got this, come on, bird, you can do this, bird, I promise you, you can do this. I'm trying to speak life into the bird. And so next thing you know, the bird, its wings and its chest became big, like, yes, I am designed to fly, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm supposed to be doing. And so then next thing I know, the bird hopped on its feet and it hopped out of the box. So the whole point of the story, let me add to that. My son comes home, and I says, um, Jace, where, where's the bird? And he said, you know, because we had to leave. We couldn't wait to see if the bird would fly, or else Reuben Johnson would probably call CPS on me or something for being late all the time. But he, he looked, and he said, um, well, I'm home, but I forgot to look up. Not I forgot to look up. I forgot to look up. I gave my son hope. My husband gave my son hope. And what we did was we both walked in our gift. So what happens is if you walk in your gift, it levels someone else up. So please don't ever hold your gift because your gift is never for you. It is always designed to level someone up. Someone has to come through you in order to level up. It is not by design that I have received some of the most broken kids I have ever seen in my life. And I'm so grateful I was placed at Johnson because I know that I'm walking in my gift every single day. And so in order for them to level up, they have to come through my gift. And in order for other kids to have to level up, they have to come through your gift. So I encourage everybody in here, find out what your gift is to give back to people. Find out what your gift is to give back to these kids. Because someone, like the bird, was waiting for my husband to come through and care gift. Imagine if he would not have been there to actually care give the bird, it would have been dead because I wouldn't touch it, right? Imagine if I wouldn't have come behind my husband and encouraged the bird. Please know everything that has breath, I'm designed to encourage, and it is attracted to me, okay? You can't, you're naturally drawn to it, and you wonder, okay, how come I'm always around when an accident happen, happens? How come I'm always around whenever um, I need uh, some words of encouragement. Whatever it is, it's because that person needs your gift. Don't shortchange this next generation and don't give them your gift because it is because of you that they've come through your class. Welcome all kids that they've come through your class. Figure out what your gift is and if you know what it is, pour it into them because they need you in order to level up. Thank you. From Scott Johnson Middle School, Don Griffin. When I say avid, you say it's lit. Avid. It's lit. Avid. It's lit. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. What I'm known as is the life lessons teacher. So I probably teach about 2,387 life lessons in one school year. It is absolutely insane. Uh, lessons are caught, they're not taught. So I try my best. If a situation is occurring in the class, okay, let's stop. That's the best teaching ground right there. So 
we create uh, situations in class sometimes and I am able to bring in a life lesson. I want to be known for my grace and my kindness. I really try to teach kids to extend grace because you never know what a person is going through. And I really try to teach kids and model to be kind to people. You know, kindness is the oil that takes the friction out of life. And I try to tell them, like, if there's oil in a car and the oil completely is, is dried up, the car locks up. So the more we can be kind to people, it's going to take the friction out of life.